All right, I'm with uh, Kaylin Marsgirl Dickinson and from That Guy with the Glasses, and we are be going to be discussing what happened to Squaresoft. Mm -hmm. Now, we're both fans of the series. Uh, yes. I grew up with Final Fantasy II on the Super Nintendo. What was your first uh, Squaresoft game? Uh, first Squaresoft game, it was either Final Fantasy VI or... Um, or the Super Mario RPG, one of the two. But I started out on Super Nintendo as yeah. far as this, my company Squaresoft. Yeah. And for the most part, they for the 16-bit ge uh, generation, for part of the 32-bit generation, they have been the the force behind the JRPG market, both in here, both here in North America and in Japan. Yes. But. What, after Final Fantasy VIII, things seem to fall apart. Do you agree with that, or do you think um, it was something else? Um, well, uh, you know, quite honestly, I'd say it's more like close on to ten or later it started to fall apart. I personally adored the hell out of nine. I, I mean... Me too. It was, it was one, it's one of the best on the PS. As, exactly, and I think, um, you know, uh, Nobuo Uematsu and uh, Hironobu Sakaguchi, they, they loved it. They wanted to go back to their old sprite sort of look. Yeah. But, um... In uh, in all honest opinion, I think the problem was Sakaguchi's plan of making a Final Fantasy movie. Um, and, oh, quite honestly, the movie, I didn't think it was a bad movie, but had they maybe removed the name Final Fantasy from it, it might not have bombed as bad as mm -hmm. it did. You know, they go and they build this um, production studio in Hawaii, very mm -hmm. expensive, and of course, it, it was just a... It, a hugely expensive production. And it went, it didn't so, fare, like, like you said, had they changed the name to whatever, whatever. If, it, if they had just left, like, The Spirits Within, the, the subtitle yeah. of that movie, then it probably would have been okay. Well, now, that movie bombs in, like, what, it was, like, 2001, I think, when that movie came out? Uh, so, yeah, it was... I'm pretty positive it was 2001. Yeah, I'll, I'll, if I'm wrong, I'll put up an annotation. Of course, but, um, so, that movie bombs... Squaresoft is like in the can basically. We don't really know what we're gonna do. Um, so they start thinking up and they're like grasping at straws. Then Final Fantasy X-2 comes out, which don't believe the copies of the North American releases you see. They all say Square Enix on it. No, Enix had not yet merged with them. In Japan, Enix hadn't merged with them yet. That was all on Squaresoft. They were just ripping at straws at that point. And after all of that, that's when Enix comes in and they're like, huh, this is our biggest competitor, okay? It wasn't a merge, it was a buyout. It basically was a buyout. And now you notice the, the biggest the biggest names in Squaresoft's past keep getting rehashed. A dead horse is being beaten, that's Final Fantasy VII. Oh, yeah. um, 13 is getting all kinds of offshoots all over the place. Mm -hmm. 12 did as well. Um, it's, and so it's... It's just going straight downhill. None of the original staff is left. Well, I shouldn't say none. That's not exactly no, no, true. No, uh, Nomura is there. Um, yeah, but Nomura, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, personally, I'm an Amano guy. Exactly, yeah. yeah. No belts and zippers for me. No, thank you. If you ever actually... Uh, I decided one day, like a couple months back, I'm going to go look up information about Amano. And I look at, oh, well, he started working for, like, Tatsunoko Productions at the age of, like, 15. He was doing that for years. He was animating. He created character designs for like Initial D. He is uh, an actual watercolor artist. Mm -hmm. He's got his stuff featured in museums. He's got his own animation thing that's about to come out this year. If it hasn't already, I might be a little late on that. I'll, I'll add an annotation to that. <laughs> then I go and I look at Tatsuya Nomura's information, and it's like, here's his background history. He worked at Squaresoft. That's it. And he wasn't, when he was picked up, he wasn't even actually an artist. No. He, uh, he was like monster and battle and yeah. that sort of stuff. And so I'm just thinking, what? Did somebody stumble across him, like, sketching in a notepad while on his lunch break? And they're like, oh, that's some pretty cool artwork. Let's use you for a couple of yeah. uh, couple of games and then buy a mono and buy the rest of the original team. We've got this guy who will do it for cheaper because he doesn't have this long list of credentials. That's basically what I'm assuming. And then he... I'm not going to completely bash uh, Nomura. He came out with uh, The World Ends With You, which is by far one of the best Square games to come out in the recent... The, the, the best of the Square Enix sort of generation. Yeah. I'll agree with that. Um, I'm just... 
I remember what Lord Cat was saying about when, when um, Ken, if if I knew, if if I'm wrong, I'll correct it. Mm-hmm. When he left uh, Capcom, he said that it may have been a shakeup in the Japanese industry. Do you think that that's probably what's holding back SquareSoft right now? Is that they're so ingrained in that corporate culture that they won't be that they can't expand without they can't they can't risk expanding without alienation or that's entirely possible because they're going with what they know works right now and the economy isn't good for anybody and I know Japan's having a rough time of it now as well Mm -hmm. so they know Final Fantasy is gonna sell so now they're pumping out Final Fantasy including now um, in February they're releasing the Final Fantasy trading card game which if they were gonna do that they really should have done it years and years ago Mm -hmm. I'm personally still going to look it up just to see Me if too. does this actually play like a good card game, but quite honestly, I don't actually believe in it. I don't have faith in it. So they're just beating this dead horse that is Final Fantasy, and surprisingly, I don't know why this is, but Enix titles like the Dragon Quest series, I don't hate what they're doing with it now, no. which makes me think it's the Enix team that is pulling all the strings because they can actually get the Dragon Quest stuff right. Yeah, I, uh, I know, they keep it simple. Uh, Dragon Quest Nine, it, instead of a big PS3 huge party, it was a DS release. It, it's fun. It is... It's funny. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm in a, this one level, uh, what is it? Uh, pig, uh, pig Pimple or something? Like, they make fun of North America stuff. Of course. And it's, like, the same artist uh, they keep on using. Um, yeah, it's um, Akira Toriyama. Uh, yeah, Toriyama-san. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's like, it's like the, uh, Enix is pr- killing uh, Final Fantasy. Just about. That's really what it feels like, which is why I'm personally currently sticking with Mistwalker Studios, which is owned by Hironobu Sakaguchi, which is the creator of Final Fantasy. And he's about to come out with, uh, this month in Japan, actually, they're releasing The Last Story. Of course, that sounds ironically no. oh, like yeah, Final very. Fantasy. For good reason. It's yeah. this guy's game. It's his series. Yeah, I mean, and on. they and they kind of uh, with when uh, Spirits Within died, they said, "Okay, Mr. Umatsu, uh, Mr. Sakaguchi, uh, we're going to let you go." All right, uh, just a couple more questions. Uh-huh. Um, what were your thoughts on Final Fantasy uh, Twelve? Do you think that was sort of a resurgence of the old roots? Like there was more, it was more fantastical in elements, or? You know what? At the time when it came out, I didn't like it very much because I was kind of bored. The story left me kind of bored. It, it didn't suck by any means, but I was personally kind of bored. I didn't really like the gameplay where you could set up your characters to basically play the game for you, because that's yeah. literally what I did. I like set up all the characters to heal one another and then go find something else, kill it, heal each other, and then I walked into the kitchen and made a sandwich. <laughs> and so that's at the time, I didn't like it very much, but then looking back on it after finding Final Fantasy 13 came out, I realized, oh my god, this is like... Heaven. This is amazing in comparison. Yeah. You know, so I, I really, I can't diss on 12 too much. I really like the tactics universe. I love Ivalice. Yeah. Um, a lot. The Ivalice Alliance? Yes. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan of that universe. And so, no, I can't really hate it. They went back and used a bunch of developers they used in, in previous games. They knew what they were doing, mm-hmm. so I can't hate it. Yeah, you mentioned the. Uh, did you ever play the Tactics re-release, uh, the PSP re-release of Tactics? No, uh, because I already have it on the PS One, so I just didn't have. It, it wasn't. There weren't big enough changes made to it to make me feel like it warranted a second purchase. So, ah. Okay, that's uh, I, I guess if you were a huge fan of Tactics, mm-hmm. then it's probably worth it too. Oh yeah, I I, ha- I have the PSP version. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. It, it's gorgeous. It, all right, and uh, finishing up, uh, any last thoughts? Uh, what do you think uh, Square can do to reestablish its old roots? Well, there's one thing that they're doing with, for example, Final Fantasy XIV, which I really wanted to have faith with them uh, from the beginning, so I did actually buy the initial release of Final Fantasy XIV. And despite the fact that I saw that it could be a good game, I knew in the bottom of my heart they didn't release it in a fully completed state. but. They're kind of getting on their game now because they realize it too. They're like, you know what, let's scrap this development team because they obviously didn't get their act together in time. And they brought in all these other people who like worked on Final Fantasy XI, worked on Tactics, 
worked on um, the other game that takes place in the Evilus universe, uh, Squaresoft. Uh, uh, Van uh, Vagrant Heroes. Va uh, Vagrant Story, yeah. So they get people from these games, developers from these games, who know what they're doing, and now uh, you can physically see the changes in 14. It's been morphing over months and months and months, and I, I have total faith in it now. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you the, bet. Uh, I'll, I guess we'll see you. What's uh, what's new in the future for you? Um, the next most recent thing is probably going to be another anime news editorial, but I do have another translation terrors in the works. It's probably going to come up later this month. I just don't have it set on the calendar yet, but yes, later in January, another translation terrors is coming up. All right, thank you very much. All right, thanks. Now I'm with uh, Mars Girl from uh, That Guy with the Glasses and Ink Reality, and we're going to be discussing what happened to. Oh, Thanks for killing the Q Paw. No 